In this video, we're going to do a full overview of lightning. We're going to talk about lightning formation and how a cloud gets charged up. We'll talk about where clouds like to discharge, especially how lightning rods are extremely likely to attract lightning. And we'll talk about a few quick safety tips as well. So first of all, we have some water vapor rising up from the ground. And as that water evaporates, the water rises up into the atmosphere and water vapor is invisible. It's tiny little droplets that are invisible to the eye. And as they rise up and condense, they condense into little water molecules that eventually also freeze into little ice crystals as well. And just like all matter, they're composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So we don't really care too much about the neutrons, although they are in the nucleus and contribute to the overall mass, but they have no electrical charge. But we have a nucleus that is positive, and then we have some little electrons orbiting around the nucleus. So we have a bunch of these droplets that are starting to rise up and form these little ice crystals. And as they're rising up, some of them start to have more water droplets and ice crystals connecting to them and therefore increasing their mass. Now, some of these crystals either stay suspended where they are, they rise up or they get heavy and they fall down. They do a little bit of all the above. Either way, we have an updraft of atoms moving upwards and then we also have some atoms moving downwards as well. Now, when they move downwards, they might knock off these electrons and now all of a sudden we have loose electrons towards the bottom of the cloud. And then we have an atom that lost electrons that is now positively charged and then bring these positive charges up to the top of the cloud. And then eventually we have positively charged atoms up towards the top. And we also have these loose electrons that were knocked off the atoms earlier towards the bottom. And that's how we start to get some charge separation. Now that our cloud is charged up and we have an excess amount of electrons towards a certain portion of the cloud, it's looking to discharge. Now the cloud as a whole is probably still fairly neutral, obviously kind of depends on the cloud, um, but the whole bottom portion is definitely slightly more negatively charged. Now because of the concentration of electrons, it wants to neutralize and kind of disperse those electrons. And it's going to do that a bunch of different ways. Um, a lot of it is going to be intra cloud, which means it'll just discharge some electrons within the cloud itself. Um, secondly, it's going to do a lot of cloud to cloud discharging as well, if it, there's a cloud nearby enough. And then in the event that it can't do either of those two, you'll see a cloud to ground strike where the electrons are going to start to release towards the ground. And in also rare cases, we have electrons that actually discharge from the ground up to a cloud. If there's a fairly tall charged object that needs to discharge, it might shoot up towards the clouds, but that's pretty rare. So let's talk about how these lightning rods are going to work. Because of several factors, they are going to be very, very attractive to a cloud that wants to discharge. It's negatively charged, so it's going to naturally push electrons away and repel them away from the tip of the lightning rod, therefore leaving mostly positive charges. Now these two have some sort of attraction towards each other, so now they're even more likely um, to connect and have the electrons discharge. Now because it's a conductor, it is high off the ground and close to the cloud, and because it has a sharp or pointed tip, make those things all very likely the electrons will strike it and then not the side of the building itself. So then once the electrons shoot into the lightning rod that is connected to a ground that safely disperses it into the earth and those electrons will naturally repel each other, making the lightning strike very safe. And they have tall buildings in major cities that get struck 20 to 30 times a year. And it's pretty harmless because the electrons just flow through those conductors and then ground themselves. Now, if you are involved in being close to a highly charged cloud, there are some safety precautions that you're going to want to make, which are the following three things.
Now, because of these three factors, you want to be um, as far away from these three factors as you can. Obviously, the conductivity, you can't really change too much. Um, but the height, which is basically how high you are up towards the cloud, you can change a little bit. And then obviously this one, the, the pointed part, you obviously wouldn't want to have something like an umbrella above your head. Um, but you want to stay low and um, squat down towards the ground if you can, possibly. Um, number two, stay away from tall objects. So it turns out that because it's raining, oftentimes, if you squat down near a tree, a tree might get struck by lightning and then also cause some damage to you by either striking you from the side of the tree or the damage from the tree actually injuring you. Um, but three is the main thing you want to go indoors into a developed building or possibly in a car as well, because it has a nice conductive surface that the electrons can go around and keep you pretty safe. So to sum things up, our cloud is getting charged by millions and millions of collisions where electrons got knocked off, and then we have positively charged atoms at the top. Now that we have some charge separation, those electrons are going to want to discharge. They often discharge to the place as close as possible, which is within the cloud, which is called intracloud, towards a neighboring cloud. And sometimes in, in the event where it can't discharge somewhere else, it's going to go towards the ground. With our lightning rods, they are very likely to be struck so that buildings won't get struck and damaged because they are conductors. They are close to the cloud because of their height and they have a pointed tip. If you are in a, an area where there's some clouds um, getting supercharged up and there's some lightning warnings, then you wanna make sure you stay low to the ground, stay away from tall objects and definitely get indoors as quickly as possible. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand the lightning, lightning rods, and safety. Thank you for watching and listening.